on the Palace of Westminster centred the thoughts of the British Commonwealth of Nations. For the first time, for the benefit of all Her Majesty's subjects, the opening of Parliament was being filmed. The House of Lords, crowded and glittering, awaited the arrival of the Sovereign. The centuries-old ceremony was to be seen by millions who, before this day, could only imagine the majestic scene. The Imperial Crown was brought to Westminster from St. James's Palace. It was received by the Lord Great Chamberlain, the Marquis of Chumley, and by him placed on a table in the Royal Gallery. To the privileged assembled company, it was a sign that the Queen herself would soon arrive. But now all eyes were drawn to the jeweled emblem itself. Made for Queen Victoria, it was last refashioned for the present Queen. Nearly 3,000 diamonds sparkled beneath the lights. Now came the sword of state and the cap of maintenance. Viscount Montgomery was to have the honor of bearing the sword. The Earl of Home, the cap, which has been carried at openings of Parliament for more than 400 years. Its origin is not clearly known. The Duke and Duchess of Gloucester with the Duchess of Kent and her daughter Princess Alexandra and Princess Alice came towards their places. And then the crowd outside welcomed the royal procession from the palace. With this part of the opening of Parliament, we are all familiar. The great pageantry inside, reserved so far for the few, was soon to be recorded for all to see. Earlier, the Yeomen of the Guard performed their traditional duty of searching the vaults beneath Parliament. Thus had their predecessors foiled the plot of Guy Fawkes and his fellow conspirators to blow up James I and his parliament in 1605. The search is always made before the royal opening, but Guy Fawkes had no successors. In the royal gallery leading into the chamber of the Lords, it is now within minutes of 11 o'clock. Her Majesty is in the robing room and the Lord Great Chamberlain commands that the door be opened. The time-honoured ceremonial achieves an entrance beyond the possibilities of any stage. The Queen's Most Excellent Majesty, to use the old official wording, is escorted towards the House of Lords. Complying with tradition, the Duke of Norfolk, the Earl Marshal, and the Lord Great Chamberlain walk backwards before her. Queen are the eyes of all present, and she is being watched by millions outside these walls. Well might Her Majesty find the ordeal beyond her bearing, yet never was she more composed, never more dignified. As every schoolchild knows in Britain, but as people beyond our shores are sometimes unaware, the Queen's speech is written for her by the government and outlines the programme of the forthcoming session of Parliament. She herself does not frame the legislation. The Crown is above party. And on this morning in the Royal Gallery, there were no thoughts of party, only of the realm and the gracious lady who adorns the throne. The exalted company of the House of Lords rises as the Queen slowly enters. Packing the chamber are the Lords Spiritual and Temporal, envoys of foreign countries and ambassadors. The attention of all is gripped as Her Majesty mounts the dais to the throne. It all makes a perfect setting for the historic occasion. The first pictorial recording of the opening of Parliament. Lord Montgomery bears the sword of state on the right, the Earl of Home on the left carries the cap of maintenance. My Lords, pray be seated. The Lord Great Chamberlain is commanded to summon the Commons. Black Rod, Sir Brian Horrocks, leaves the chamber to convey the message to the Speaker of the Lower House. Present are the recently appointed women life members of the Lords. Uh, quietly, everyone awaits the arrival of the faithful Commons, who must assemble standing to hear the gracious speech. For though the House of Lords has lost much of its power, the old forms are observed. The Speaker of the House of Commons is attended by all the members. The Prime Minister stands at the head of his party, Mr. Gateskill at the head of his. Later, they would return to their own house. Now, as only at the opening of Parliament, the three estates meet together, Queen, 
Lords and Commons. The Lord Chancellor, Lord Kilmuir, takes the printed speech from the purse and humbly proffers it to the Sovereign. And with assurance well befitting her rank, Her Majesty delivers her gracious speech. My Lords and members of the House of Commons, I look forward eagerly to the tour of Canada which I shall carry out next summer with my dear husband. The peoples of Canada and the United Kingdom have long shared a common destiny. It is our hope that the friendship and understanding between them will be strengthened still further by our visit. We also look forward with much pleasure to our stay in Ghana in the autumn of next year. This will be my first opportunity of meeting my people in this new member country of the Commonwealth, and I particularly welcome it. I hope that it will also be possible for me to visit Sierra Leone and Gambia. My government will neglect no opportunity to promote the advance of the colonial territories and the increasing association of their peoples with the management of their own affairs. My government will seek to play a full and constructive part in preserving peace and justice and promoting improved standards of life throughout the world. To this end, they will actively support the United Nations and the North Atlantic Alliance and other regional pacts of which they are members. My Lords and members of the House of Commons, Today, for the first time, this ceremony is being watched, not only by those who are present in this chamber, but by many millions of my subjects. Peoples in other lands will also be able to witness this renewal of the life of Parliament. Outwardly, they will see the pageantry and the symbols of authority and state. But in their hearts, they will surely respond to the spirit of hope and purpose which inspires our parliamentary tradition. In this spirit, I pray that the blessing of Almighty God may rest upon your councils. The Queen has opened Parliament, the fourth session of the present one. The Lord Chancellor receives back the printed copy. On this historic day, millions have witnessed the most memorable inauguration of our time.